Hello everyone, welcome to another session of the Film Voyage. Mm-hmm. Today we have with us a writer whose story, whose stories have had a had a certain sense of conscience and a certain sense of depth that we all have connected to immensely. She's given us films like Chapak, Margarita with a Straw, Waiting, Guilty, and of course Kanu Bell's next Agra, which is very much awaited. Of course, the writer I'm talking about here is Atika Chauhan. Thank you so much for joining us, ma'am. It's an honor. Thank you. Thank you for getting. I've been seeing all my colleagues like going on lives with white birds. Thank you. So this is a great moment. So uh, before we before we went live, we were talking about uh, the mainstream and the way the narratives of mainstream are certain uh, are celebrated at times. Uh, now. if we take say your work per se uh, like chapak one of the criticisms that chapak received was that it was somehow burdened by the messaging uh, the telling of it was somehow burdened by the messaging do you agree with that thing i as i was saying i think i'll, I'll not answer it with a yes or no directly i i just know <laughs> that uh, there are no binaries like the more, I've, i've 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 lived a very you know like a difficult uh 15 years in this career and uh, i think each year has been about knowing less so than before and uh, you know it's just i i feel i i feel less sure of all values all values and all beliefs and all suppositions that i've had uh when from the time when i compare myself uh, to what i how i started 15 years ago or 12 years ago actively as a screenwriter in bombay i have it's not like i have lost out on ideals and values but i as a active practitioner i know that we don't exist in binary and uh, there are so many creative negotiations and compromises that go be you know behind the back during you know kind of like navigating a way through the demands of the studios and uh, the commercials the actors there's a lot of creative loss like we just it's it's literally like you know you keep just losing out on um the quality that you intend that you intend to create in the beginning and every stage that you cross cross through you, you keep losing out on on some quality or the other because you keep negotiating at the end of it if, if some dhacha remains and it it still resembles like you know you can still identify ki ye koi sher banaya tha ya ye you know you can still identify the animal or the beast that you began with i believe it's pretty much so i would look at it as a triumph i would look at chapak as a success, as a triumph I, i mean for for the subject that it was how everyone would react uh, or you know even listening to the idea of there would be a film like this how unpalatable it is for a commercial audience uh to create that to have the support of of a great direct i mean it was meghna's story but to have the support of a great of a big actor on it to have mainstream studios uh, promoting that film uh and producing that film well, i feel it's 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 a very, it's a huge milestone in the in popular indian cinema so i look at it like that i can speak of of it from the basis of screenplay and i know that yeah i have i have negotiated a lot with what my original voice was and what i had to do to integrate a more a sort of like a accessible uh format uh you know because uh, we were riding on so much money that uh, we couldn't just possibly uh not not persuade not chase the audience we had to chase the audience enough uh, and yet we do it in a dignified way so that was the reason why we had to take the middle path that we took yes of course there was a generation loss in the so i'm not de- i'm not i'm not in denial of that but i'm also not saying that i got compromised or i was incognizant of that because i think i did it with awareness and actually when you do these things with awareness you then choose the right moments of compromise <laughs> you know that where you're allowing yourself a, a moment of money dialogue you know where you are like kind of like going into meta drama you know what meets so you're kind of like choosing places uh instead of going into it with a with a head which is so naive and then i think you shouldn't do that film so when you get into an enterprise like this you should know what exactly you're in for 
So I have to write a really pro film. Like for example, I've written, I've coded in Agra. I've, I've worked on other films where I know that we have um, held our uh, creative idea. You know, we have held it uh, to the T uh, because we know that uh, our, our audience is extremely different from from a mainstream audience. The audience of Agra is not the audience of Chicago. Uh, there may be a subset which might be common for both, but that's a very small. <laughs> small little circle so, yeah in terms of the uh, in terms of the structural choices that you guys made uh, with chapak now mm. uh, some would say that uh, a script like this uh, would would normally i mean we would we would identify or make it more experiential if it was linear now uh, you guys kind of made it in a way uh, you, you wrote it in a way that it's almost investigative in a, in a sense that how it how it goes about that what what was the choice behind that the choice behind that was to especially stay away from a very, uh, and I'm going to use that word. It may be slightly controversial and problematic word, but I'm going to go away from a mainstream, which is led by a very male gaze sort of a way of approaching the story and which would have been to make this a revenge story or a rape revenge or one of those you know dark dreary tales which is about so much about chasing we did not want we wanted restorative justice to be the core of the story we did not want it to be a story which is about baying the blood of someone we did not want to focus on the person who threw the through through acid on him uh, because if we were to make it a, a typical protagonist antagonist mm -hmm. story we would have we would have to focus on that instead we wanted to focus on the protagonist her journey and and basically make it about the community, make it about how she basically brought herself dignity, how she brought herself hope. Uh, and so this was, I think, a very perhaps. I mean, I'm I'm bittering when I'm saying this because I know how um, suddenly you know a lot of people will have accused me of being a feminist. Almost not that I I actually care because I wear it with an, with that badge with a lot of honor. But it is a very feminist stance. To, to stay away from very male themes and approaches of, of and narratives of breaking down that film into a thriller. We did not want to make a thriller. But at the same time, it's not like we, won, we don't have the smarts to understand what was the investigation like. But then at the same time, there were roadblocks. The investigation by itself was not exactly extremely complex. It was yeah. easy one to crack, and then what is what are the what are those dramatic impulses that you keep returning to keep returning for? So in this case, we we chose a we chose a format which told you the story, not just of of the attack on 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 Lakshmi. We try to tell you the story of every attack in India. We try to tell you the story, and the focal point was Justice Verma Committee. So we tried. To, that's why the narrative is designed around that because that is when the momentum took place uh, in this country and you know a lot of these uh, gender issues were basically brought to the front after the Nidra case. So it basically was the time when a lot of these things were in news and with that rush, uh, you know, lot, our protagonist got uh, herself avenged and uh, actually acid laws got amended in the country. So. So for us, it was not just telling you the tale of a incident because I think that we would have done disservice to to the whole subject, and we we wanted to tell the story of of like maybe perhaps India from 2020, 12 to 2016 around then, which is where the story is located at, and what it what it meant for women in India generally. I think. So you spoke about the. Um different stages where the script undergoes and there is somewhat of a compromise or somewhat of a transitional loss of uh, uh, of the of the of the soul uh, somehow of, of the script now what what i noticed with chapak was that the way it was edited it was edited in a way that it almost felt like there was so much anticipation there was too much anticipation that someone something's going to happen something might turn up all of a sudden but it's but but when I imagine the scenes that how how must how the scenes must have been written, it's very experiential. It's going like almost like a story rather than a plot. It was edited like a plot while a film, but it was actually a story while a film. Do, do you agree with that? I kind of agree, but then this is something that I even if I have an opinion on it as a writer, I know that it's a director's call, and uh, like like I said, it it 
it even if it read like a different film on paper uh, from what it eventually turned out to be i have i mean i have allowed the film to be what it finally became because ultimately a film is a director's film and i think those are the calls that make me took and uh, i stand by them i mean i it it was it took me some time to to bring myself to accept it it wasn't easy in the beginning because obviously there was a lot of resistance in me considering i was so attached to the material and we had created it for a for a year but then i i i really don't see how i have that prerogative to decline uh, megna that call uh, so i had i mean finally you know it's it was a result of a lot of composite choices and those choices keep evolving you know it's film making is a, is <laughs> is like uh, chasing a moving target you know it's it's never really like how you intend it to be because it's just really collaborators along the way and uh, it's uh, even a good a film that finally looks uh, you know good for you or whatever perhaps is an un- unintended result of <laughs> of some accident <laughs> perhaps a happy accident you know because you really don't know i mean um, 50% of the work that we do mostly fall through the shelves like after the first draft or something so it's just you know it's just i mean i over a period of time i'm only grateful like i i, I had a larger way of evaluating this uh, like a more i think more uh, narrow way of evaluating this uh, a year ago but uh, two years into the pandemic has uh, has given me the you know the bigness to now really like be grateful for the fact that a film like this even exists in the form that it did and yeah, i uh, i mean i am going to make allowances for my director for making the calls that she made yes you are right that structurally it kind of stayed steered slightly away from how it was on paper you made the right observation yeah. now uh, another very unconventional uh... part that you guys took with the script was that the midpoint was all was almost felt uh, triumphant for the character like usually we see in the middle of the story right there it's like the rise of the conflict and and on a high we just like say like interval so that you know people are anticipating what's going to happen but it's almost like the first good thing that happens to her mm-hmm. and she comes out of the court and uh like that's why and i think that that's a very polarizing choice that you do because maybe the audience might lose interest at that point Mm-hmm. now uh, what went behind uh, writing like you know that okay this is where we wanted to it's a very good question it's a very thought through question it's it we wanted to go beyond the material success of 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 winning a court case because what does winning a court case to an asset attack uh, a victim uh, lead, uh, lead to like it all it does is basically give you something on paper you feel avenged in the moment but it doesn't give you ever return you your face back or your normal life back what do you do with your life thereafter and so it was largely about how she negotiates this back into her own life how she negotiates the success back into her own life and enables herself empowers herself uh, heals herself to fall in love again had develops the courage to you know do things which which kind of nourish her and like uh, g- give back to the community give back to her family uh, so for us the focus was that so it uh, you know a lot of time if uh, i know that it may sound like a little um uh, uh, flaky when i say this but uh, the response that i get from screenwriters and uh, creatives is very different from the response that i get from actual survivors who saw who really identified with the second half of the film and i can't tell you the number of survivors who uh, came to me and were so grateful to see a love story for dipika yeah. uh yeah. because uh, that's you know they that's a, i'm not saying that it's a i i don't know i don't have an opinion on it anymore but they felt extremely gratified looking at that part of her life fulfilled because they felt yeah. really hopeful in the fact that they that there is a chance uh for them to live a life uh which could involve uh, romantic being romantically accepted and involved with someone like equivalent of like a vikrant messi so it 
you know, for them, it felt like, oh, there is hope for us. So they came out of the theaters feeling extremely hopeful. And the love that I got for that, like from the survivors themselves, uh, was huge. Uh, so, so yeah, I, I think in the long run, I mean, those were the choice was that we wanted to focus on trauma and healing. That was the third act. The, it was always, it was always, third act was always about trauma and healing. So that yeah. was that was what was important. Yeah. And of course, the the love story is it's it's got one of the most romantic lines uh, that me and me and my friend were watching it in the theater and we were like, Yare, kitna romantic scene ki, uh, there's two people in a in a bus, DTDC ki bus mein, and they're saying uh, ugly hearing <laughs> That's like that's asking out in such a I mean that's that's how how did how did you guys uh, find scenes and moments like this which have so much grace? in knowing that okay the the larger the larger looming thought that the audience will be left with while watching this film is is being really uh, almost almost very uh, scarred by what 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 the character went through so uh, how did you find these moments of this these private moments of a certain form of intimacy i mean uh, i think once you when you when you approach a film uh, you take certain narrative decisions. Uh, I do. And uh, so when you go into a film, sometimes you deal with your, like a subject like this, so obviously you are very angry, right? And you are identifying with this anger because you are a woman from this country. Various things have happened to you individually and to other people. Like, for example, every woman involved with this project ob- obviously identifies with the subject at a very deep visceral level, like at an experiential level. But we have to identify... How are we now going to respond to this anger? Are we going to respond to this anger in a kundari maang indicative way? Or are we going to respond to it in a dignified way? How do we do it in a way that is respectful to us in this moment? And what are we doing to basically bring healing and success? How do we define our success in this moment? Like I look at myself as, I mean, maybe it just came from where I am attitudinally in my life. So if that informed somewhere the dignity, because I just did not want her to beg, to cry, to, uh, to you know, sort of cover for, for sympathy. Mm-hmm. So for me, the approach of every scene was, how do we do it in a way that it's, that it's, that she has deeply internalized, that she doesn't owe the world shit. Like she doesn't, she doesn't, she does, she is normal. Uh, it's not her fault that these things have happened to her. So if she were to have that sort of, mechanism and her lover is operating from the same energy what will these scenes will be like so we we that was largely the i think the key word there was always dignity how to bring dignity to a situation which has already gone really really often so uh that was that was a defining organizing principle of 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 writing this film how to do every scene in a way where you expect something really irrational or something really grotesque to occur because you've seen too many Hindi films like this where you ex- expect yeah. the hero to come and like do something and sabotage the heroine's film. But how to do that in a way that how will the skillful, smart, resourceful, Dimagwali heroine do this? Uh, because she is not always obviously not going to fight the fucking villains, right? So she how will she do this? How will what was the most resourceful, smart way of approaching any situation, including the romance, including the crush that she has? So, so it's always, you know, it was always like once we started understanding that character and that voice and we were consistent with it, which is basically largely screenwriting is about consistency of character and voice. And so once we started maintaining that map, we knew that how the scenes started evolving on their own. Uh, there was obviously the inspiration was also uh, to some extent, which we obviously dramatized then. Uh, I think may have brought it a few tones down, was seeing Lakshmi and Alok in person, how they were with each other, like what was their banter like, uh, how yeah. they dealt with each other, how they norm- how normal they were with each other. They had they were a normal couple, you know, and they, they bickered, they fought, and she didn't get uh, too many brownie points because she was a survivor. So they were like <laughs> brutal with each other, and just like any other regular couple. And so that was also a big uh, sort of like moment of inspiration for me where 
I knew that the love scenes were written were to be written from the perspective of two witty people, you know, uh, engaged mm-hmm. with each other and basically doing that small mind game with each other all the time, outdoing each other and bantering and outfitting each other. So that was generally their relationship of you know the way you say that tongue keeps them. So so that was the thing, and then yeah, so intimacy comes from a their intimacy is extremely internalized. I think I'm really glad you picked on it. Uh, it's it's actually something because their intimacy is the kind which can't go into very um, cliched spaces of great decla- declarations. They have yeah. a tough life to live, and which is what he says. He you know he tells her that you know he's a film. Me, acha lagta hai. Oh, yeah. Actually, in real life, me all this doesn't really have a place. Uh, which which is actually their life, you know. And uh, so uh, all your moments of intimacy are deeply internalized. It's so much in behavior, and it's so much in small affections uh, small kindnesses which are almost missed so it was so much written in there were hard there were the idea was to give less dialogues and more behavioral instincts to both yeah. characters uh, for them to show love to each other because they have eyes for each other across the courtroom or across uh, crowded places and for for me the fact that she very beautifully immediately starts taking uh she, she she starts dominating him immediately uh because she senses that uh, she is loved she senses that because he is never going to say it but she senses it that i know i have it now in his heart and so she kind of like starts kind of in cashing that and for every scene starts with that moment so so yeah so that was largely these were the few uh, impulses yeah. no uh, another thing that, uh, that that we have to like of course uh, that that stood out for me uh, in chapak was the title sequence now that is something that um, like the when the song comes and it's just i don't know i've never seen uh, like mostly what when filmmakers kind of take a uh, like a, a very disturbing scene, either they put it off screen so that you imagine the worst or they kind of go very grotesque but this one it's it felt like you guys are exactly as you mentioned at a distance and it's like almost like uh, someone is trying to peep through uh, the camera that is, is she okay what's going on with her no writing a sequence like that on paper uh, what was it like like just just uh, if if you have to write a scene like this that okay when this happens when when the main uh, plot point of the film which is she uh, uh, her getting attacked what was that like in terms of this uh, in, in paper like how did you give the visual cues to your director in terms of uh, so that she picked on it and kind of gave it that treatment uh so uh, normally any process where you know between a writer and a director uh, works on the basis that what the writer is possibly giving the director is is a visual option uh where the director has a prerogative to choose it also evolve it as time goes between the actually writing the script and making the film or maybe the director themselves are the co-writers so they really know they are hand holding the vision on paper with you uh, uh the attack scene was re- actually written slightly differently from how it has been pictured in the film uh it was a very slight it was a pov scene so it was uh, you know maltese pov of getting attacked and it was a very bloody bloody vision and all of that so it i knew that the director even though we kind of like tentatively agreed on that this may be one route of doing this uh i'm only speaking very technically right now i'm not even going into what yeah. it led emotionally to uh what we had to see what all happened because i think that's not perhaps the focus <coughs> of this conversation but keeping all that aside was a ho gaya uske baad like once you were technically breaking this down we knew that there were two two ways to do it you know one is the one is the way in which finally you see it getting pictured and there were there were more evolved ways less evolved ways of doing this finally i think it all depends on location what was the moment like that day when megna shot it what she instinctively felt is the right need right now so i think she has taken a call but when i have written it on paper on paper it was always a scene where it was the entire scene was shot through Maltese POV. So we, actually, we are experiencing the world from after she has been attacked. So she, her vision has become blurry. The cars are coming from both sides. 
and she can't really stand up and you know she's uh, with a with a sort of like a staggering foot she's going around so the camera is shaking so it's basically was something that was to be done with the hang hair but yeah. that, that was a decision that we kind of yeah. agreed on on paper in screenplay but then it got translated differently which is which which did work obviously because you you are bringing it up and it had an impact on you so uh, but the the idea was to ally it more with the with the, the experiential journey of the character uh, so mm. to because this was something this was the core drama of the film so it ha- it could be done but maybe perhaps for 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 the sake of accessibility i think she she took another visual decision Um, yeah because that that actually that actually felt uh, like you know you couldn't watch it it was almost i mean you could you, you were just imagining the worst and it 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 felt in, right in the beginning and the, with the song of course and uh, later on in the hospital with the slow motion and everything it was it couldn't have uh, like i can't imagine it uh, now it being a pov or a thing so which one do you agree with more as a like do you agree with what how it is right now I agree with it. I, 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 I. All my disagreeability has at this moment been taken out. The only time I was very dis disagreeable is when I immediately saw it getting translated for me because it was more more a process of transition for me because I've created something and I'm I'm so attached to what I've done and uh, over a period of time I have allowed to let go and detach myself from the film. So now when I see it as a com as a whole, I know that. it works in the format that it is it 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 may have i it may have been a kind of like a sore thumb if one scene suddenly was away from the style of the other scenes you just stylistically now the film is like marrying married yeah. every scene is married to each other right and that is all that matters it's all about unity of style yeah. you know so it doesn't matter because if finally the director is interpreting it through her voice and uh, she has chosen that and i'm okay with it because i i mean yeah there will there will be there there's so many things that have stayed into the film uh, which i'm so proud of so which of your films ma'am do you feel had uh, have had the least uh, transitional loss let's call it that when you watch them i think guilty guilty really mm. satisfied me there are few scenes which have been directed so well uh, by ruchi when i say that uh, i only mean <laughs> like in terms of script uh, script to screen uh yeah. like that scene you know which is uh, where uh, uh nanki uh, which is a character played by kiara uh fights with akansha's character so uh, you know and they are in the college hostel and they are fighting for getting the bathroom in and uh, yeah. i just love how it has been shot uh because that's how i wrote it and uh, she's kept every beat into it and only made it several notches better and there's so many such things that she has done where like even the scene of the uh, you know the the blind man walking into the subway yeah. and tagging uh, the way ruchi has done it, it i when i saw it i had goosebumps so for me i felt extremely satisfied especially with at least like you know if you see five of those scenes with the way you have written them and that is exactly how to get delivered like it's just so satisfying uh, so yeah i i love uchi i'm working with her again uh, uh, i we just have that synergy you know where we just uh, we understand each other on paper and i also it's also your you have to it's like really like you know what i mean you have to allow your director to eventually take over because i wouldn't want the director I mean, ideally, I would want the director to go and do their own thing, right? Like it, that would be not cool, you know. So yeah, yeah. so they should have. I mean, but it was very satisfactory. Like I felt very satisfied. Like my, it was like blood lust, like full. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, so some of those scenes came out so right and guilty, and it's very proud. So. No guilty. Guilty is a. It's 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 a it's a different beast altogether when it comes to. I, I, I've I've heard people say that uh, they they were with the film up to a point, and in the last twenty minutes or so, uh, everything got really uh, hazed up. And uh, so I don't know. I mean, it's 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 a very difficult film to uh, somewhat uh, get your mind around because I liked it. I loved the way it was uh, 
uh, it, I love the way it played out. But by the end, it almost felt like, okay, was I expecting this guy to be a bad guy? Did I want him to be a bad guy? Or did did I expect the writers and the makers to portray him as a bad guy right from the beginning so that I can it doesn't feel like a shock to me? Yeah, I'm really glad you're saying that. That is exactly the point. That so many of these, so many of us. I mean, that was exactly what was the finding of the Me Too movement. Uh, it was the idea that you know, just because a person has not, has largely been good to you all your life, or is largely uh, exercises has been largely exercising a lot of discretion in his uh, in his behavior with women, does not mean that he may not have uh, you know a dark side, or is incapable of making. a uh, vulnerable sort of decision uh, uh, and how does how how do we look as women when we defend our sons our boyfriends our men and try to like you know keep cutting slack for them so that was the whole idea the reason why he's also featured as somebody who's extremely dignified and respectable and someone who is largely don't doubt is the exact point that we are wanting to make to that film um that uh, and that is exactly what happened during the me to movement right like a, yeah. like you you just had to believe the woman that's that's what you had to do you just had to believe just just because the guy hasn't come out come on to you doesn't mean that he doesn't have that part of his personality is is not true so So yeah, largely that was the guiding principle for creating that character. It was intentional. But uh, now, now, now the other side of that argument would be that once you once you make the audience spend so much time with that character and see his side a lot, you're almost making them connect. Now this could have gone either ways, and it went either ways. I think uh, it was very polarized in terms of how it was received. I think that, I loved, uh, it. loved it. Women loved it. <laughs> it. It. I can't tell you. I'm a hero of some sort. Amongst like yeah. the, really some sort of an underground feminist culture, because of that film, and a lot of people, a lot of my friends, like you know, who, who debate screenplay with me, say that this plot was that plot was, this was wrong, that was wrong. You should just see <laughs> the women responding to that women. It is coming from such a deep visceral place, and um, uh, because they they really felt the pain, and they ha- because it is. also the story of gaslighting if you felt so gaslit by the narrative and you feel like questioning the writers and the authors imagine the women who have gone through these kind of traumas all their fucking lives and for 4 30 20 40 years that we have been told that actually you are the one to be blamed you are the one to be blamed for your beauty you are the one to to be blamed to fucking exist you cause it You you make us do it. So I think somewhere it's okay if we played around with men who couldn't understand the film and basically felt a little demotivated and unsettled at the at the climax because they were like, "Are you good guy? Are you to ham? We have invested in this. In this, we have to ham. We are not like that. Is exactly the intention of the film. Thought <laughs> through, clever, creative intention. Uh, there may there are some script flourishes in the end which I did not agree with uh, as a creative. For example, the way it unravels, you know, like an amphitheater in the end. For me, perhaps, yeah, it was a bit too out of or inconsistent with the with the nature of the film. But yeah. then again, that is a choice that a lot of stakeholders, um, you know, took, and we had to go with that consensus. Uh, there was Netflix, there was Dharma, there was Ruchi herself who was attached to that opening because she had come up with. uh that opening like several years ago so you know and also like the best for her because she wanted this film to be seen by uh, a tg which is not the tg of sony which is a film i love uh i love sony uh but she did not want it to be sony. she wanted it to be the version of a uh, a pink we wanted to make a feminist pink we wanted the film to have its money dialogues and places which should be watched by regular people Uh, we wanted it to be a netflix film you know and like the te- when we say netflix film we wanted wanted it to be a popular film so that decision that clarity that we are making it for for the same audience which actually watches uh, i know what you did last summer yeah 
सो इट्स इट्स लिटरली लाइक विद तुमको पकड़ेगा क्या क्योंकि सोनी के सोनी जी का जो ऑडियंस है वो टू और नहीं वो वो गिल्टी नहीं देखेंगे सो यू नो सो फॉर अस दैट क्लैरिटी एंड दैट कॉन्फिडेंस केम फ्रॉम दैट प्लेस वेयर वी न्यू हु वी वर मेकिंग दिस फिल्म with with this with this uh, idea that okay you have a you have a protagonist who's uh, who's own uh, uh, like she's also unreliable narrator i mean she mm-hmm. even she herself doesn't know that if 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 what yeah. she's seeing is actually happening or not yeah now with that um once we once uh, once it led a certain way and then it twisted around on its head um were you guys ever conscious or somewhat uh, apprehensive that this can completely uh, kind of face plant everything that we've done up until 1 hour 40 minutes or this can this can either elevated were you guys ever skeptical about it ki yaar itna bada jo aisa achanak se aisa ghum jata hai ki everything is just like you know hazy in our head nahi i think we had the confidence because i it's not like we are doing something really radical in novel which hasn't been tried before no. i mean it's this very standard uh, uh, you know trick Uh, employed by a lot of films like a box of being a wall wall okay. flower that's the same the the lots of things lots of things, <coughs> like thirteen reasons why or or you know I think a lot of uh, this genre of films uh, you know take this sort of uh, narrative risk and uh, so we knew what we were doing I I didn't think we were doing something we knew we were doing something. Uh, uh difficult but we yeah. didn't think that we were doing something so unconventional that it will not be accepted no but say uh, like it 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 works I have to say this at this one point i have to say this a lot i mean not to dissuade you from questioning <laughs> further on this we can yeah. talk yeah. about this till cows come home but i'm just saying that i know that this feeling that you're feeling uh, this feeling of feeling incomplete and or uh, or uh, feeling unsettled by the narrative is something that i normally always hear from men and never from women just wanted to gen well, i am openly gendering your query and now yeah. you see definitely yeah definitely i i know i know i know i know i knew this when i when i when i was getting told that it's only because i'm a guy and i can Uh, is is the reason why i'm having this uh, yeah because you're not yeah. you're not emotionally processing it you are intellectually yeah. processing it yeah. and yeah. Uh, because you're processing it through the maybe perhaps through the map given for the male character but all the all the women are only identifying either through akansha or through kiara and yeah. they they found it absolutely reasonable you know they found it they there was they were not shocked at all it was surprising in inevitability they could always see that this guy there are red flags there are red flags the, the red flags that the men didn't see the women could and uh, because there are enough uh, you know position in the film so the women have identified we i i did identify the red flags and i knew that somewhere it, it might be leading up to that point but the way it played out The, is is that's the reason why i was saying that okay at one of 40 minutes it takes a kind of a turn and the reason why it works in a series like 30 reasons why is because you have so much time with these characters that you can see the red flags and everything that can kind of put you in a way uh, like polarized uh, opinion of the character give you a polarized opinion of the character now do you feel a, a narrative like guilty would would uh, would play out i think more more seamlessly in a in a longer format I think it's the it's the type of subject which kind of lends itself very more easily to a series because there was so much to talk about. It. So, but we were we have we were making the film, so we had to contain it within that narrative. Yeah, perhaps some places needed more breathing areas. This I'll give it, give to you. Like that. Maybe perhaps you know in a series form, uh, it would have been maybe this kind of back and forth was not coming from a place of you not able to. agree yourself with the structure of yeah. how he's how he is uh, you know finally like revealed yeah. maybe that's your problem your problem is his unraveling so exactly. perhaps that could have been greatly serviced too but we had too many you know loop too many <coughs> threads to tie and so maybe may, we may have done things also a lot of time from script to screen in the edit so much of the film has been 
knocked off you know like it was a it was a slightly lengthy it had become a, like a 2 hour 30 minute 2 hour 15 minute sort of film from where it was compressed down a lot of the plots uh, subplots have been like uh, shed along the edit so there was a lot of meaning and meat a lot of philosophy that we had like kind of like shaved off uh, to to make it a far more uh, easily consumed film because that's what happens when you make an ott uh, unless you unless you know you unless an ott acquires a film which is already like doing really well which is what happened for example in the case of the great indian kitchen yeah. where it wasn't made for netflix or amazon it was it was it was made for for the director it was made to service the voice of the director and then from there it became so hit so it's such a big hit on uh, the sunny stream that um, amazon had to had to go and uh, pick that film from me because it was getting so so many hits um, so yeah like for an artist to kind of uh, reflect the space they are in their life in their work uh creatively now is that something that you uh, subscribe to uh, generally that whatever you going through in your life you somehow it will find uh, a way into your narratives i don't know how to write what i what i haven't experienced i and i always stay away from trying to pretend that i can do everything i can't i am i am not that experienced and uh, not that good at my work and i have no shame in accepting that like i i totally never want to venture outside of the political sociological situation that i have entered this world in and i i see that has so much potential with respect to storytelling that i don't see why i need to go and basically want to be a writer for all kinds of genres i i and i also believe that there are there there are too many good writers servicing their own narratives there are too many male writers already in this industry uh you know writing very hardcore male structures uh patriarchal structures mainstream structures i really don't see why i need to act to that crowd uh i am very happy doing what i can do uh, going and if that means you if it will be called a limiting experience as a writer uh i have st- ek point ke baad i have stopped debating this because i used to feel a little challenged when i used to get thrown in this question earlier and i used to try and defend it and now i actually look at it as a compliment because i'm like actually yeah yes you are right i am unable to do a what is the way men want to do it i'm unable, i go I, yeah i am not going to like uh, you know bay for the blood of pakistan i'm not going to write jingoistic films yes i'm not going to write uh, mindless action thrillers if that's what you mean so all of that if that's what you mean by that so yeah i really believe in my sociological politics and my gender and i i have i'm here to service what i have experienced and what i know and uh, i am constantly taking effort to deepen that i am constantly taking effort to educate myself more because i surely know that i don't know enough but i don't have a desire or a thirst to become someone else uh, that you will have to give it to me that's my most redeeming quality i don't want to be anyone else but me <laughs> so you know so for me uh, that bit is that that has given me a lot of clarity that's the person i am and that is obviously what informs my career my decision in storytelling um, and i actually don't know who who is a good storyteller who works outside of this ambit but then that is a debate perhaps to another um, kind of like a same q and a uh, i don't see how i mean if you've not really convinced by or you're not like basically losing your sleep over an experience you you want to write about um um it will be false like it, it you can't imitate uh, someone else's trauma you can't imitate that experience you can't imitate someone else's life journey 
you have to 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 really bleed on paper you really have to uh, you know channel what you have gone through and i i, I mean you can we can diversify this we can add more to it we can deepen the journey and the creative experience and final output but i don't see i mean in this lifetime i feel if i actually just service uh these roles that i have for myself with the kind of films that i have in mind the vision that i have for the next 10 years of my career i'll be good it's is other ambition in me and that's also maybe because it's coming from a place where you already uh, had a certain body of uh, have had a certain body of work as a journalist and this is something that you're doing out of out of the necessity of lending your voice to to things that you feel very strongly about now, is that a reason yeah. it i feel very strongly about these things yes it comes naturally to me people around me can identify it creatives around me can see that and they're obviously like giving my passion a platform so giving my rage a platform giving my anger a platform giving my voice and skill and talent that comes with it a platform so yes i may have maybe just like that right person in the right place wrong person in the right place sort of like a situation one of those but uh, i have there are two aspects to it one is trauma and one is skill and uh, if i were if i am i i believe it's a, it's a combination of both and i feel my duty professional duty is to is to get better at both uh, understanding the trauma and uh, applying it more skillfully and in a more engaging way uh, in my work through my screenplay so for me it's not like either or it's not like i mean uh, yeah uh, if you were to say are your services screenplay services open for anyone's hire they are not if i don't believe in a film i am not going to do it i am not going to write a regressive film uh i would write a popular film but i am not going to write a regressive film however classy it is uh if that's the politics uh, of 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 the person of the individual that i am and that comes with the with the with, with the person that i am it comes with the skill that i have if you want my skill these are the there will be these limitations have i become like this after 10 years actually i've actually mellowed down after 15 years of work i was even more <laughs> like unbearable actually in her this began my career so so for me it's the, literally like uh, i don't this is who i am i'm very happy in my little margin and i don't want to take the place of anyone else who's writing jingles like hello so i can is it in reference i i talking reference of uh, of the indo park core film that you were writing <laughs> no i am not i'm just saying i'm i'm not i'm just saying generally like because of the yeah. <laughs> i won't write a jingoistic film as where i would Definitely. like to end up yeah uh so um no as you mentioned that every film that you write you have to have some sort of uh, like of as as creative people this this tends to happen that when you're writing something you have to have something that you're latching on to that okay this is my entry point for the film have uh, this connection with the subject if you don't yeah. have a connection with the subject you really don't know what you're bringing to the table i mean you may bring words to it but they'll be empty they'll be empty yeah. and you would rather be if you're bringing skill but you will still have to have a co-writer with you who will bring the experience you know what i'm saying someone who will guide it so someone who that is why we have so many times we have consultants on on now like all these or oh, rooms that we are you know kind of like forming and all that. so many times a lot of us bring different skills to the table like some of us are good at writing some of us can do overnight uh, you know drafts of screenplay and all that but we really don't know the experience and another person guides that experience with me they may have gone through it like you can't write a uh, you know like if you if it's a story about a trans character you're saying that you're going to write it without a trans person in the room uh, i'm or at least have a consultant or have five five trans people or five trans creatives to read it uh, or like generally like how it used to happen in india or you know how a pink is written by three men and is told to the pov of a man uh, so you know how you even and even when that is the case i i still have a lot of respect for that film because it did open up something if because there was a pink there could be a guilty five years later because yeah. i think we could give a reference of the genre 
so <laughs> that so i'm so grateful that think exists so i'm not really dismissing its presence each step towards evolution is is of some importance and we can't radically change overnight and that is a kind of patience we'll have to have because there are so many uh, you know movable parts here that we are dealing with as a practitioner i know it because it's i can't be so impatient i'm not i'm not a fan i'm, I'm actually doing this at a at a at a level where i have to actually handle the egos of 50 people at one point so uh, so because it's it, like any other thing in the world it is a it's a it's a business at the end of it you really have to make room for everyone and find creative make points or uh, you know like for 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 every for things that you want to do and what the other person needs so yeah i i just really believe that that's you re- if you if you really can't bring something new to a subject i think you should stay clear of it i think you should write what you know because i'm sure there is there are thousands of stories uh, waiting to be told in a way that no one else has told before in the way you know it um, i think we should try and be ourselves uh, that exactly is what like electrifies writing writing becomes extremely re- electric and uh, you you tend to channel a flow uh when you know what you are writing about obviously you have to pad it with a lot of research you have to read a lot you have to watch a lot you have to do a lot of genre uh, learning and none of that that is taken away but to say that you going to get on a subject when it doesn't actually interest you if if a woman's trauma actually doesn't interest you uh then don't write it, it doesn't make you less of a feminist you know because don't try and just to act the fight for its own sake do what you are doing and that we serve feminism in a larger way do what you are doing you know if you understand masculinity if you understand wounded masculinity well well tell that story because that is servicing feminism too you know if you are bringing balance to the world in your own way you you are doing it right so if you don't have a connection with what you are writing change the subject doesn't mean that you stop writing this change the subject you don't even won't be able to write everything in the world yeah. so what was that thing uh, like what, how did you find those connect with the with, with films that you were not necessarily a part of right from the beginning say like a margaret with a straw or a waiting uh, uh, in terms of like you know um, the the subject or the characters what was it that get, got you that entry point into those films in waiting i knew for sure it was uh, grief i have been i lost my father when i was very young and i have uh, i immediately identified with the grief of of living in the prolonged trauma where you know that your parents will die or someone very close to you will die and then how you cope with it Co- coping is exactly something that i have experienced and nursing or caregiving uh, an ailing person or a person who is not responsive is something i have gone through uh, so for me that uh, immediately was my uh, something i immediately related and so i knew i i mean i read the, the i heard the subject and i knew i had like it was that simple uh, because i i know it uh, and then for margarita uh, i may not have had cerebral palsy uh, and i am not why uh, Uh, by sexuality but i have uh, there were other aspects to it for example i felt her her confusion and her vulnerability and the exploration of it through through the character that she was the hot mess that she was uh, was something that i could relate to as a woman and uh, for me that was that bit of the journey where she's literally finding herself through making mistakes um, was something extremely identifiable also the fact that she was a dairy girl um uh, you know who's trying to explore herself and all that so for me those those aspects became a matching energy of sorts and uh, then obviously there were other veterans on board so for example like it was something experientially much more like it was shonali's experience of cousin story and all of that so we had all of that uh, you know resources and uh, to to really know that we were doing it right uh but yeah then there were there were other decisions that we were taking uh, with respect to screenplay and dialogue uh where my skills were then 
for example, Bean Channel. So in each film, I feel I I normally never take a subject which is out of my emotional uh, ambit. If I don't know it emotionally, uh, I know that I won't be able to sustain the project because anyway, it is a it is one of the hardest jobs in the world writing, and uh, to write on commissioned briefs is 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 another is a very different beast. And if you then make your life easier by doing something that you know and you like and you constantly can bring yourself to the table once you start slackening on the other aspects start you you can restoke your fire by by feeling inspired because you feel so passionately about what you're doing uh, but if you do it and everything about it is wrong or like um, you're misfit with every aspect of it structurally emotionally subject wise uh, then you you then you 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 might must be a great writer man because i want to meet you <laughs> Who are you? Who are you? Who, who can <laughs> write without feeling emotional? Oh no, boy! I mean, the dikhao shakal. So uh, that so that way, you know. So sometimes, you know, writers see it's one or the other. Like sometimes, like an Aaron Sorkin, I believe, like has found his rhythm. You know, yeah. the, the rhythm comes from his style. Uh, so yeah. you throw, but also you can see that there are even the subjects that he has has a certain consistency. So it's not like he has his pet themes and subjects. So he takes something, but he then he what he brings to the table is his rhythm and his style and his voice and his dialogues, and uh, that you know that frenzy that he brings to the writing. So you know again that if we we are all working with something that is uniform to us, something special. We are we are all carriers here, and we will do you bring to us to मेरे पास कपड़ा लेके आएगा उसे लाने के लिए किसी और के पास लेके जाएगा. You know that they. Google bring us a style कि भाई ये copy करना है ये मैंने internet डाला है Pinterest से ये बना दो suit तो मैं बना दूँगी but it will still have some touch from me which will be something that I will peculiarly bring to the table which the other person will not so to be able to identify that over ten to twelve years I feel or be able to identify that this may be the path I may evolve into I feel is is good work यार इतनी मैं तो बड़ी slow writer हूँ अरे मुझे तो लगता है अभी 10-15 साल लगेंगे और ब्लॉसम होने में मुझे नहीं लगा इतनी जल्दी जल्दी मेरा घर है ना मार्गरेट मार्गरेट एडवर्ड की तरह 80s में इस इस को I'm I'm focusing on staying alive I'm like ठीक है बस जिंदा रह लेती हूँ अगर मैं if I just managed to not get killed but 60 I would have अपने automatically I would start writing really well lovely I've stopped being in this game only क्या करना है Uh, for for a full screenplay dialogue draft because I do screenplay dialogues like I do get a lot of dialogue work but I normally write screenplay dialogue and I take six months to do a first attempt I don't never promise anything before this I I am a slow writer uh, I I don't do anything new. कभी ऐसा लगता है आपको लाइक कि मतलब when you watch a film जहाँ पर transitional loss ज़्यादा होता है कि मैं बना देती हूँ इससे तो क्या ही है मतलब Like do you ever feel that uh, urge to direct some sometimes? Okay, so yeah, you know, say whatever you want to make. No, what is the question? Do I feel the urge to direct? Do you want to direct? Do you want to direct? I want to direct. I want to direct, but I'm not in a hurry because I love being a writer, and I think even if I start directing, I'm not going to ever let go of collaborating with other creatives who are. Uh, so I I want to reach a point where it should be a very organic shift. from being a writer who is now owning her you know autonomous work uh, and then just taking one step ahead and becoming a director for perhaps owning the tales that i want to tell for the stories which have originated from me uh, yes i do have the of a fanciful idea of being able to direct uh, those stories original stories but uh, for everything else uh, i want to be allied to subjects which are very dear to me 
uh, which need my work, which need my voice. And I'll always be open to the idea of collaborating as a writer, as a, as a director. I also at one point want to become like a showrunner. Uh, so, you know, so for me, I just want to expand in areas where I, I do definitely, control is a wrong word, but to be able to, I mean, it is a wrong word, but then I'll, I'll, I'll freely use it in this moment, but to be able to yeah. creatively control uh, the exact vision that with which we have started something. So for me, I think to empower that vision, uh, the dream that I have, if it involves direction, I will. I don't want to become a director because I want to jump hierarchy uh, because I feel that that's a little unwise as, as a move because yeah, yeah. sometimes if you're a better writer, then st stay a writer, you know, like not everybody can direct. And, uh, and it is a very different beast and it's not easy. Uh, so I also am like a little lazy like that because I'm like, why should I do so much effort? Why should I put in so much effort and become a director? I am very happy being a writer too. So having said that, the reason why there is a, there is a need or a desire to go one notch higher is not because I want to be more known or famous or get more money. I mean, I want more money, but maybe perhaps we start getting better paid for my thesis. But but uh, the idea is to arrive at any point which gives you greater control and power over what you want to tell. And if that is how organically it will break down for me five years from now, like I've given myself five years to figure because I have a feeling that if I continue to do what I'm doing over five years, I will hit a point where I'll, I'll feel limited. Uh, you know, at point ke baad, I will exhaust myself and I may want to go into like a one time, like, like how you can just see a Kaufman or a, or a sock yeah. also, like once in a while just going and you know, being behind, they want to be behind the wheels. Finally, like being able to drive your own car. You, know, you don't want to be driven all the time. Uh, but then at the same time, never really letting go of your original passion. Because I think by spiritual nature, I'm a writer. I'm not a director. Yeah. Uh, so that I feel is uh, is largely how I see myself growing. And I, I want to grow very slowly. Everyone wants to grow really quickly. And I <laughs> want to grow really, really slowly. I... I will take five years, maybe 10 years to become a director. But when I want, I want when I want to make, when I should be able to make that film, I should be making it with a lot of ease, grace, resources, um, uh, also skill. Uh, you know, like uh, I may have, viscerally may have absorbed that much skill in 10 years because, uh, you know, so for me, I, I'm not in a hurry because I, the, I don't know how good I am at my work. But I do know that I have, uh, I have exacting standards of what good work is, uh, and I think that keeps me going. That keeps me restless and sleepless every night. I see a good film, and I feel so jealous, and I feel so greedy, and I feel so angry, and I feel so restless so that I am stuck in a in a structure which is not allowing me to to move in these ways. And for me. To find freedom, I think my larger aim is to find freedom for my voice. If that comes with direction, if that comes with show running, if that comes with becoming a producer, whatever it takes, like even if it means I have to, I can sorry. So whatever, like whatever it takes will go into that process. The idea is to empower the voice and gain more freedom and also to identify the voice because um, I don't know how people are able to immediately know like one film ke baad matab, sab veteran writers hai, veteran. <laughs> I am a young writer who is still finding a film and I have uh, I am here for a very long haul like chota chota dhide dhide on the side kuch kati rangi koi zarurat nahi hai mujhe kisti ke saath gaunti karni hai koi aim hi nahi hai mera aksa so I think that way I have made my life very simple lovely what was your time at film school like? Like this, uh, this idea of uh, voice ढूँढने वाली जो बात है वो पहले कुछ पहले एक साल में आप सब कुछ होते हो फिर अगले साल आप कुछ भी नहीं होते हो और फिर पूरे टाइम आप वही ढूँढ रहे हो कि भाई कि what what exactly is the voice? So what was your time at film school like? Honestly, like film school involved a lot of various work. It involved 
there was ex- we were supposed to write uh you know like char treatments one big screen play and all that wo sab to ho raha tha but honestly that's what i wrote in the school was shit like now that i read it i'm like oh god ne- never should anyone in the industry should know really ye maine likha hai this is pathetic uh, but obviously i mean i look look back i think what it did for me that year in ki was it exposed me to such amazing cinema like i watched the film every night at mt and uh, which is the main theater i don't know if you were familiar with fii yeah so you know we would all just like wear shawls and all that and raat ko 8:30 8:00 baje that idea of like just watching the film and the access to such diverse uh, uh, cinema where you could watch an angle polis or like a greek you know a greek filmmaker or like an iranian filmmaker this is the first time i was watching such amazing films and uh, i mean those films was doing something to me i think like for me that i honestly think i have learned less from people and the directors of the films that they have made i have i have learned less from the filmmakers i have learned more from the films and uh, i have i really that is why i align myself i find my truth every time by watching the film uh, every time so for me i don't i once i landed onto this process where i know that watching five films in a row is going to really you know um straighten me up uh every time i go into spaces where i can't deal with people anymore and i can't understand i can't process through their egos i know i have to return to my abhyas which is in this case my riyaz is watching a film and watching watching a film is an art in itself like how reading a book is an art in itself if you do it mindfully it is it is a teacher you know a film is in itself a teacher it's like listening to a great composition or like focusing on a great piece of art so it teaches you so much and the best part about a film or any other form of art is that it is a distilled truth of what the artist wanted to achieve in that moment and in some cases like you know because it has been captured in time I mean, even a music composition has been captured in time you know the, the fact that human beings are inconsistent and they are not always noble uh and their nobility uh, is subject to volatility because they, they are assholes most of the time and they are like great people suddenly uh so that the fact that there is there is a way to achieve and record and chronicle that greatness of, of human experience uh in that moment is is the reason why i trust films more than the filmmaker and uh, so for me the greatest teacher is film watching uh reading a screenplay uh i don't i don't uh, recommend reading too many books uh, for writing screenplays i recommend only two things watching films reading screenplays and writing like these are the three things that are going to make you a writer uh everything else is something that obviously is adding to the whole experience and yes there's there's something to gain from every experience because but i over the years i have my my belief in any other any other guiding system has diminished uh you know so because everything comes uh with a certain give and take which you don't know if it's if it's the right experience you want to espouse so you you try to get human experience out of it and you focus on the on the film and if you focus on the film the film will speak speak to you and it will teach you if you i i don't know if that was one of the question but i i i am on a like at this moment say this that the best way to learn how to write a screenplay is to take three films of your choice and break them down into beats and stay with the character and his motivation and impulses as it escalates into a dramatic climax that is how you learn how to write a screenplay you learn how to drive a car by driving a car you learn how to cook by cooking you never learn how to drive a car or cooking by reading the manuals but it's not like manuals are not good 
or, or not necessary to the or they they have no value in the world but ek point ke baad you have to discard that knowledge and then you really have to put yourself behind the wheels and really just you know press the fucking escalator so you, uh, so that's the larger thing i'm saying that riding is so much of a it's a it's a skill which is so much in the moment it's something you learn and you get better at by riding and rewriting rewriting is what makes you a writer you the and uh, what makes you a better writer with every draft is your courage to to let go of what you've written in draft one that courage is what makes you a better writer uh, not uh, uh if you if you get egoistic and defensive uh, and you will get attached obviously to what you're writing and you will defend it but at one point of time to find a midpoint and to find a creative solution uh to something that you have uh, very narcissistically gotten attached to is the exact moment of breakthrough in a screenplay and uh, so yeah so you it's a, it's it's a, it's a it's a very interesting game of how you're breaking down your own ego uh while you write a screenplay or because it's a very humiliating process because you keep getting proved wrong and wrong again and uh, you know so i feel writing a screenplay really humbles you and writing generally as a career it's like it's always taking the piss out of you i never yeah. be confident how i can say <laughs> never like you never have a good day i'm just yeah. the best <laughs> like i just feel i'm like I'm so shit on paper so yeah so for, and from there you're constantly you know dressing the crime you're constantly doing it constantly doing it and uh i think that's that's what it is the ones the, i think the happiness come from the cheekiness the frivolousness the lightness with which i now appear is because i have accepted this i'm committed to this process i know that this is how it's going to happen i know that there are no easy solutions i know that there are no overnight successes i know ki patience se time se yaar art banani hai to time lagega बिना टाइम के आर्ट नहीं आती है और जिसको बहुत जल्दी जल्दी आ रही है फिर वो शायद कुछ होंगे देर मे बी सम प्रोडीज इट्स ऑल्सो ऑल्सो सो मच एनवायरमेंट बेस्ड राइट लाइक यू नो लाइक इफ यू बोथ योर पेरेंट्स और फिल्म मेकर्स और यू ग्रू अप इन अ सर्टन एनवायरमेंट सो यू एब्जॉर्ब सिनेमा एट एट अ सेल्युलरली एट अ वेरी एट अ वेरी अर्ली एज वेर यू नॉट एक्वायर्ड इट ओवर वेन आई डिड आई वॉज डूइंग दिस वेन आई वॉज ट्वेंटी फाइव बट समी डिड इट एट फाइव and uh, so of course they will have uh, their opportunity come before me uh, but uh, the the test of the pudding is in the pie what is that? the the saying that you know the it's in the it's in the it's really in the in finally what you make out of it uh, how maturely you 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 channel your uh, creativity and also how how dedicated you are like perseverance plays a really big role because i think the kind of work that we do it really makes us want right writers are famous for their procrastination their blocks uh, and their ability to find 78 excuses before they write eight words so you know so it's really like uh, why is it that it is so necessary for you to write it is a commitment that you need to it is a marriage literally like i think writers are for, for first and foremost married to their craft because it that's the constant thing that you're constantly negotiating why do i need to do this because it is an it is a struggle and i also know that if it is not a struggle if it comes too easy to you then maybe you know, it's a very arrogant thing to say but maybe you're not a good writer What are the oh, so my last question? What are what are those three scripts that you like as an exercise that you just mentioned that you know break it down by beats and uh, stay in the character? What was the what were those three scripts that you did? Um, uh, I mean, when we were in the school, you know, we were being thrown at different scripts. But I'm gonna just pick out three scripts which I feel that if you are a complete novice and in this moment in time you're beginning your career and you want to read three screenplays, which I it's Eternal Sunshine. um it's a social network um and it's gone girl and i really really believe in the power of these scripts and i i really i think if you if you read them really well 
uh, you should be able to know what should be your relationship with white on uh, what should be the relationship of white and black on paper. Uh, like a uh, Kaufman, he tends to overwrite, and it's a it's a very verbose draft. Uh, then a so- Sorkin who writes differently. Also, for example, the draft of Spinte of Prisoner. So you know, uh, so I I you know what I'm saying like. Take the genre that you like, but if between the three and the four films that I've mentioned, I think we've covered largely the skillful genres, which because they require and they invite skillful writing, so they give you an understanding of brevity as with versus length. So, an Eternal Sunshine is a film which, 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 um, which is beautiful to read. It's almost like a novel because you can literally hear Kaufman's voice uh, while yeah. you're reading it, you know, and um. To know him, to heard his lectures, uh, and all that, and you know his persona, you really can see how he's storytelling is in the way he he is breaking down the visuals, uh, and that's exactly what screenplay writing is. It is basically putting an emotional map of of a character through the way how you look at look at it, you know, and uh, so it's so much of your voice that you're literally uh, putting on paper. uh there there is a duality in that don't be too eager to find your voice but at the same time don't be too eager to suppress it don't make it an absolutely flat draft without any humor and fun and individuality and at the same time don't be eager to to chase it too much and be, you can't become an stockin on day one of screen writing but if you are then maybe you are a born rupee core and then you know then you write a screenplay like rupee core then and god bless you but it's you know if that's your voice and but what what i'm going to say is navigate through those dualities and uh, if you read these i think it doesn't sunshine uh, social network gone girl and prisoners if you read these four screenplays that accomplished uh, films and uh, i think it it is really helpful uh, watching all films of pincher and then reading them back on yeah paper is a great exercise i feel uh it's a great exercise in how he translates each line exactly because of, he's not writing it okay. yes yeah. he doesn't write but he monitors and he he without taking credit he does work with the writers so so many what is beautiful is how he how each line is a shot and uh, that's not necessarily a rule now again if you have to break the school you have to know the rule uh Like a Greta Gerwig film doesn't really follow this, uh, you know, because her uh, her screenplays are so much more like it. Not necessarily is bound to the idea of doing a short breakdown basis each line. Uh, that's not how she goes. But then because you know she's so much in control, because she's also going to direct her film. Yeah, she has that kind of confidence to give you a very good narration on paper because she knows who as a director is handling, but. other writers who are working independently and who may hope that the directors will be like pincher can actually just follow the basic rule of like taking each line as each shot and then um, sort of like following that and then obviously play around with it once you get better at it um uh, but largely a screenplay is storytelling in 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 the form of yeah. visuals in the form Action of camera movements in the form of how you're seeing it <coughs> movement by movement beat by beat that's what it is and the best way to learn this is not read much after you have a basic hang of what is a narrative what is the structure what are the three acts what is the what is the da- i have only ever if i have ever heard to uh you know like if i if i if i ever go back to any lecture of or what i which i heard in the film school is uh, when someone taught us uh, about the daniel methodology which is frank daniel he was a teacher at uh, usc and he was a very popular uh, and a, a, you know a, a teacher i of screen writing teacher for hollywood uh, so he gave a eight struck eight part structure to the to the screenplay and uh, uh if so that is something that i still have faith in uh because uh, once you have done a, a quick zero draft 
and then you want to like inform that draft with or regiment that draft or uh, with some structure because you kind of like not meeting the uh, the needs or the the requirements of meeting those eight parts uh, which are identified by a daniel methodology then perhaps you you kind of can use it to understand where you may have gone wrong but that is something i enforce after i have written my first draft also the other thing i'd like to say is that i can now be a little more flexible in my approach because of uh, not that i have become better at it i don't know but because of the experience the number of years that i have spent doing it uh, so i have less fear attached to now kaise hoga because i know at one point i know we will get there once we start we will get there because i have now taken my script through the processes of writing a very detailed step outline to a treatment to a screenplay and now i know that i don't need to go through a very elaborate process like that and like i i can already like get so you do follow that process of uh, step outline then a treatment and then like a four page a eight page can, and... yeah you cannot write a screenplay without doing the beat uh, which i in my, like an outline uh, which is if maybe perhaps you would become very good with visuals but if uh, because over a period of time it's experience right so if you have become very good with even visual beating also but you must have i feel a reference which you then completely can destroy and move away from but you must have as a beginning exercise because i think your fingers think if you don't uh, if you don't give yourself a map on which you navigate on uh, you will keep falling pray to blocks because you wouldn't know after a flourish of of two scenes which you were like really hot about and you quickly write them out and then after that you really don't know and you're still finding the film in beats you know in your head so you would rather take the slightly longer journey of putting the because you really i believe you sh- i mean i really have the faith faith in the third act it's 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 the only bible i have in the world If you don't know your third act, um, you really don't know what's your first act. So, which is why that's a combination that you constantly, uh, you know, like deal with. So, which is why you there is no point in going into or there is no point in rushing into a draft, uh, you know, before you figure what's your end, and that you can only do when once you write a treatment. which which can be a sucks, more succinct version like don't write a very detailed one for yourself but write the one which identifies the beats really well because you need to know the plot beats really well how it's all getting tied up in the end uh, because you will never be able to see your opening or you know even what your plot point one is if you don't know where you're taking it um but then different strokes for different folks so if other people have other processes that's also fine like but i largely think that this is a very reliable process of so first doing a treatment uh, it could be a short one it could be a longer but doing a treatment is extremely helpful it's largely food yeah it's so great that you're also an aaron sorkin fan mm. <laughs> i'm great aaron sorkin fan great aaron sorkin yeah did, did, did you like trial of the chicago 7 Yes, I did. Like, I love. Yes, I loved it. I, I mean, a lot of people had things to say and all of that, but I, I loved it. I mean, yeah, yeah, lovely. It's a veteran. It's a master at work. What is not there to love? Like, okay, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, uh, people is asking, do you have a writing routine? There is there a routine that you follow? Which is, uh, which is uh, informed by two things. One, my rent. <laughs> and second my producers uh, you know uh, chabuk like it, de- my deadlines and my rent they basically give me a very strict writing routine and sometimes i have to wake the nights and if i have missed my writing routine on many days then i know that i was spending a lot of wakeful months you know, finishing the work that i should have done and done but yeah i mean i'm not exactly like the mascot of discipline writing but uh, you can't help it when you work on commission assignments so you really have to be you can be unprofessional to to some extent but not like <laughs> you should be out of work 
but uh, what would you suggest to writers who don't don't have a producer's deadline who don't uh, but they have of, of course they've got rent uh, to pay but no one's uh, that's not coming from the scripts that they are writing of course <laughs> what would you suggest to those writers who just like ha likh lunga abhi ek idea aa raha hai dimag mein bade acche vibes hain iske bare mein aur ye just like ek do mahine se success basically ha matlab i mean agar main conventional baatein karungi to kis kon usko maarega but i would say get humiliated na matlab put yourself in crazy risky situations where चार लोग तुम्हें बात करने काम नहीं किया सो यू थ्रो योर सेल्फ इनटू इट एंड यू विल हैव टू डू इट यू विल हैव टू डू द जॉब इफ यू बिकॉज़ नो आई आई मीन रेयरली डज इट हैपन दैट यू फील इंस्पायर्ड सो अबाउट दे यू आर लाइक हां आई वांट टू राइट ऐसा ऐसा रोज में ऐसा साल में एक बार होगा यू नो साल में दो बार बट लार्जली ऑन अ डेली बेसिस इफ दिस इज व्हाट यू वांट टू डू प्रोफेशनली you have to push yourself to do start the minute you start you will know you'll start enjoying it in the beginning it will be drab it will be mundane and it won't be something you are willing to do like am i hold up all time like i ro- i i myself believe that you know lockdowns are like a revenge uh, <laughs> on the world because i writers revenge on the world because i genuinely <laughs> like i have i have been in lockdown all my life now you know it's like 15 saal ho gaye i never feel uh, too free uh, either in my head or in my heart or generally in my by routine because i'm always on the deadline and someone out there is suffering but even now when i'm doing this you know i'm really enjoying this conversation i just can see i'm like really into this but i know that there is someone who is waiting for me to make a submission and i can already sense their bad juju is coming my way like yeah okay so, <laughs> <laughs> you know this This yeah. really keeps you going. Kahe ka new. I, 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 I,
but you have if you're not basically i don't think people should come into films to make money or fame because that plan is unsustainable you should only do this if you're crazy about it that's that's the only advice i always give to people if you're crazy about films and film making that is the only reason why you should do this because otherwise it's an unsustainable plan you can't see karan anshuman's money and say mujhe uske jaise paise kamane hain you make that money <laughs> other you make that money by real estate he is making that money because he's genuinely a fanboy he's genuinely into what he's doing and that money is an is a is a sign of of his success is a sign of what he is doing very passionately and people can see it and feel inspired by it and can trust him to to make you know the shows that he's making and he's on the run so that don't don't get fooled by a lot of people tell me screen writing mein bada paisa hai and i really like i'm always having this like you know laugh which i'm like really nahi bol sakte because i it will seem like i'm going to dissuade by you ki ke yaar sabko karne do but screen writing mein paisa uh se zyada uh stress bahut hai and it's not really it will never match to the amount of stress that will come with it um uh, so uh don't do it all i'm saying is don't do it for money don't make films for money uh that's the, that's not why do do it like as if it's either a religion or it's it's your ultimate passion or most sexual passion do it with those two agar us tarike ka kink hai to hi sustainable plan hai otherwise mushkil ho jayega if you you know to sustain it. you have to at some point know that you are you just give yourself a compliment that you are a little elon musk like some kind of like unknown <laughs> in your own way and your elon musking your way through it with not his success of elon musking your way through it yeah um, with, with, and with no success and no no <laughs> to mars and none of that so yeah rugved has a question uh, when you have a, when you have an idea that needs to be translated visually but it's not happening because you don't know the appropriate technique yet Uh, would you suggest to sharpen the particular idea or research the filming techniques it's uh, like for someone who is writing and directing at the same time uh you would i think in in a situation like this i would start researching uh and hope to land at moments of inspiration through my research uh because uh if i have an emotional experience which makes me feel connected to something but i don't have experiential wisdom around it yes, then perhaps uh, it's it's okay for me to ingest a lot of knowledge and information uh, for a few weeks or months or uh, whatever whatever is your bandwidth that allows it uh, and then possibly watch if it's a genre film for example or if it's something that is a uh, that is a you know based on someone's biography based on or a, or a issue related thing then i would say that you need to spend a lot of time reading and researching on the area so that you know what you don't have to do. uh and i'm i can vouch for the inspiration it will come uh it will come if you if you throw yourself into the groove of uh, ingesting and digesting uh, material uh the the moment of inspiration will come to you so yeah i think it's the right approach would be that if it's becoming a little heavy uh and you're feeling overwhelmed and you're not able to craft the exact uh writing approach you should start researching first i also feel that the structure is something that also comes from the the mood of what the film is somewhere so yes if if you are not able to intuitively get it right from the beginning if you don't have a very uniform mood like some people like a sokin or some other writers we have been talking about they already know what mood they bring to a story right but if you are if you've not reached that point yet in your career it it is completely okay for you to uh, understand the subject more deeply and then understand what is the mood that is matching with this people has asked again that as someone new in the industry with no contacts how can i pitch your synopsis or treatments to studios also should you go to them only when you have finished the screenplay uh, i 
I mean, you will have to uh, find marketable ways of doing it. At this moment, it is definitely better than if it was ever before. Uh, it is always a very tricky thing in the beginning, right? You don't, you think, you think uh, you are not being uh, picked by the right people because you don't have that pipeline. Uh, so how do you get noticed by the right people? So like right now, there are a lot of agents in, in Bombay. Uh, mm -hmm. There are multiple e agencies which are which are looking at and reading uh, fresh writers, fresh come from young writers, new writers, unpublished writers. And they are looking at the material and then they're like really advocating the name around because of the also the num availability of work. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, really, really amplified in this moment because of amount of development work that's happening in Bombay right now. I know nobody who doesn't have work. I know nobody. You know, I, everyone has something. And when, uh, this, so, so I believe that if you just bring yourself to a place <laughs> where uh, opportunities abound and you throw yourself in situations with where even if you're around that and if you're in that area with six degrees of separation, Bali may be kahi hai, if you keep following that line, you will get there in a year. It is inevitable that you will get there in a year and you will start getting in, you will start getting mainstreamed. Like you will put you will be throwing yourself, but you'll have to do it consistently. You'll have to show a lot of willingness that you're ready to put your head on line, you're ready to work, you're ready to turn in a draft uh, on uh, you know on time, and uh, you're consistent and you're professional. Uh, you know, what is the most, the sexiest thing about a writer in Bombay is their professionalism. If you're able to meet your deadlines, uh, if you're able to deliver work, if you're, <coughs> you're consistent with the quality, uh, these are very, these are highly desired qualities uh, and they never let you down. These, these are the qualities as a writer that you should work on, like your skills, your knowledge, your exposure. Uh, maybe you don't have that perfect screenplay yet, but if you have these things, if you're an asset in the room, if you're an asset to your director, if you're generally your presence uh, as, a, as, a, as a knowledge resource, if nothing else, is of some value, then why wouldn't people want you in a room? Like, maybe you'll get paid less in the beginning. Maybe you'll not even get paid. But what you will gain in return is the experience. So uh, focus on building yourself too as a writer you know it's don't watch a film only if it's necessary to watch a film for the film that you are writing watch a film because it is it is something that should come naturally to you because it should be like same as breathing um exactly what i was saying earlier that you won't be able to sustain this if you're doing this from the from, from the outside you know you really genuinely have to be that person. Even if today someone says, Adhika, ab tum, aaj se tum khatam exile hai, country se tumhara, tumne bhi Abhi niklo se, tum explain hai. Maybe people can do that to me officially, but nobody can stop me from being a film lover. I was a film lover before I began writing films, right? Like I was a film lover as a child. And I've just made, so that's what I'm trying to say. No one can stop you from adding to your skills and knowledge. And that's your first dharma, uh, literally, as, as a writer. So, so do that. Uh, put in the due diligence. Uh, be professional. Uh, and be ready to fail. You won't get it right in the beginning. But you, you can bring so much. Like young people today are so informed and so exposed. And so, you know, you, your presence is, is so beautiful. That energy that can be so useful in a, in a collaborative environment. Uh, so if you know how to play that, uh, there are ample opportunities waiting for you. And believe me, if you eat, bring yourself to Bombay, sit in the cafes in Aramagar, within three weeks, you will be picked on an assignment. You may not be paid, but the fact that oh, 12 degree of separation, pe bhi agar koi kisi ko janta hai aur wo ja sakta hai kaam. if nothing else, somebody would have given you a brief to write on. Be grateful to that, you know, somebody would have... It will, it will, if nothing else, it will give you a challenge. Uh, like, and these days, like, you know how India Film Project does a screenwriting a short film exercise every year. 
and tons of writers apply to that it's beautiful these some of these people have never seen the face of a screen they have never come to bombay i have re- i've been a judge on some of those they write amazing screen plays <laughs> so it can all be self taught it's uh, just have to down all the pdfs of all the screen plays are available online um all knowledge resource is based available on youtube uh you know because of pandemic actually the writers world writers worlds have actually expanded because we are literally going through a multiverse experience because we are all connected globally through online uh, interactions and it has actually got compressed and we are able to do things which are not able to do before so believe me you don't really just just get started the way will appear just start walking the way will appear so uh, yeah i would say take risks come out uh, put yourself out there put your head on line be ready to fail be ready to get humiliated and you will be there in a year just stay consistent with the effort and keep upping your skills and the second question second part of that question was should you uh, come with a full screen play or only okay, once you have a screen play and necessarily play. but something even if it's a short film or like story ideas uh if you have a screen play very good but if you don't and you're still learning and you don't know you could be an associate on a on a project you know you could just say i'm going to be the associate on this project where i'll do the menial work and then you see another writer shape it and then that is how you learn so uh, if you can if you can discount it like that and basically get into the the idea basically it's a process right it's what you learn is the process so either you do it on your own which may not be perfect but or you bring in a short film you bring in five scenes you say okay these are the five scenes i wrote it can be a short film of made of five scenes so come up with something like that it can be an ad film people people from advertising how do they get their chances They've written ad films which is a page long, and yet you yeah. see that they can bring zingers to the line, like to the to life and all of that. So it's all about to yeah, it's all about thoda brazenness and you know and and thoda skill and thoda smartness and basically all of this will be informed by your need to do this. If the need is not coming from a place where करना है करना है करना जुनून नहीं है तो फिर उसका कोई सब्सिट्यूट नहीं है मेरे पास कोई जैसे घर में आके तुम्हें ये मतलब आई आई टी नहीं है खुद करना so with this we come to the end of today's session uh, thank you so much for speaking to us ma'am it was really insightful it was great that you did this thank you so much and thank you so much for everyone who joined in it was really good thank you thank you thank you